Hello, this is the Watchdog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Invicta 0420 Titanium. Let's start out with the wrist check. I'm wearing an Invicta 12847, and Grogu's wearing a Swish SW0192G. Grogu said Master Skywalker was trying to explain the existential bond that a Jedi Knight has with the Force. Grogu said he thought he said eggs essential, and it meant frog eggs were back on the menu. Alright, let's take a look at the watch. Comes in this really big box. Has the instructions, polishing cloth. And this is one of the bigger boxes I've seen from Invicta. Usually they come in these little clamshell boxes. And here it is. Comes on an actual foam pillow too, and not the little things that they've been coming on lately that seem a little flimsy. All right, and here's the watch. This is the Victa 0420. Now, I don't smoke dope, and I'm not into the whole dope culture, so I don't know if it's a pure coincidence that they use 420 so I'm hoping that's not the case because that just seems inappropriate for a watch this cool I think it was just a coincidence this is the second titanium watch I've had on my channel the very first watch I ever reviewed is a titanium fossil I really like the titanium and was always curious about this Invicta this particular Invicta is no longer manufactured and has been unavailable at the official Invicta store for some time, but they must have made plenty of them because they are still available brand new on Amazon. I paid $99 during the recent big Amazon sale. They are currently $170 at the time of this review. $170 is certainly much more than $99, but you are still getting quite a watch for $170. I think it is well worth it. This is a big watch, although not really for an Invicta, which is famous or infamous for some really huge monstrosities. But since it is titanium, it's not particularly heavy watch. Titanium isn't shiny and pretty like polished stainless steel, but the gray color is still visually appealing and looks substantial and not cheap. There's something exotic sounding about it and it just seems cool. My grail watch is a titanium Tudor Pelagos. This Invicta more resembles a sub, although I wouldn't call it a direct homage. Once again, the appeal of titanium is the fact that it is so light. So why waste it on a 40 millimeter watch when you can use it on a 45 millimeter watch? The watch is 45 millimeters at the bezel and the bezel does overhang the case just a little bit. It's 53.9 millimeters lug to lug, but it does have inverted end links. It's 14.4 millimeters thick, if you don't count the Cyclops, and I never do. Has a 22 millimeter lug width, and weighs 114 grams on the display bracelet with two links removed, which is incredible for a metal bracelet watch this size. I mean, this is a 45 millimeter watch that only weighs 114 grams. Can you believe that? That's pretty cool. The bezel is steel and not titanium. And it's 120 click unidirectional with an aluminum insert. The bezel action is very, very stiff. I mean, you got to get quite a grip on it. I've never seen a bezel this stiff before. It's almost a chore to use. In fact, I put a little bit of silicone lube on it just to make it a little bit easier to turn, which helped, but it's still quite difficult. But there's no back play. <laughs> No back play at all, and the clicks are solid. It's just really, really stiff. So you're never going to knock this out of alignment by accident or anything. And uh, it looks like it does line up okay. The dial is black with no sunburst effect. It has the applied Invicta name and logo on top. Then on the bottom it says Automatic Professional. 200 meters and water resistant. I don't know why it has to say water resistant and 200 meters. If you say 200 meters, you shouldn't have to say water resistant and that would have made the dial a little bit less cluttered. It has loomed applied indices with a triangle at the 12, batons at the 6 and 9, and dots everywhere else. 
This being an Invicta, the indices seem a little bit smaller than they should. All their sub homages, I just wish they'd make the indexes just a little bit bigger. It has a border date with the Cyclops, and the Cyclops does an actual pretty good job of magnifying. This is not always the case with an Invicta, but this one, the date just about fills the Cyclops, so it looks good, and it's not too big. Some, uh, some of them do, some Cyclops will magnify too much, but that's not the case here. It has loom hands, and they're your typical sub-style with the Mercedes hour hand, and uh, fence post pencil type uh, minute hand then we have a lollipop loom second hand and this being Invicta we had the Invicta logo as a counterbalance I've never liked that I wish Invicta would not do that but that's what they do so yeah they kind of overbrand their watches and just don't like that counterbalance the sign crown is also not titanium this is steel the action is kind of difficult. It takes quite a bit of effort to unscrew it, but it does pop nicely. Then screwing back down, huh, well this time it came in really easy. For a while there it was a little annoying, but maybe i just done it enough now it's kind of worked it loose. So that was pretty good action right there. The crystal is Flame Fusion, which is Invicta's version of Hardlex meaning it's a hardened mineral glass and not sapphire or anything like that. You're not going to get a sapphire and a Victa at this price, that's for sure. But it does the job. I've never really tested Flame Fusion or Hardlex for that matter. I did test the Kristarna of a Sterling once, and I thought it was pretty good. So maybe one of these days I'll have to get an old Invicta and see how, what it takes to scratch the crystal. The case is a solid matte finish titanium alloy. It has the Invicta name on the side. A lot of people hate the Invicta name on the side. I think in this case it's not so bad because since it's a matte finish it doesn't stand out quite as much. And in this case I don't mind it. I've never really minded the Invicta logo on the side like some people do. In fact the, the counterbalance bothers me a lot more than this Invicta name on the side. But it's a nice case, and I really like this matte finish titanium. This this gray, it just looks well built. I really enjoy the color of this titanium watch. It has a screw down display case back that helps with the 200 meters water resistance. It has the evicted name, the logo, 200 meters water resistance. And once again, it's a screw down. So it comes off easier than the coin edge type and you don't need a special tool for it like the coin edge type. Underneath the case back is the NH35 movement. This is the go-to movement for Invicta automatics in this price range. And this is a reliable workhorse movement. That's 3 hertz hand winds hacks and has 24 joules. And Invicta uses their own rotors, so it does pretty it up a little bit, unlike Pagani Design that always uses the stock rotor. So it's a little nice touch. Some people don't like the yellow of Invicta, but I don't mind it. This one's running a bit fast, so let's take a look at it on the time grapher. Here it is on the time grapher. As you can see, this thing is running really, really fast. In fact, an NH35, his tolerance is plus 40 to minus 20, and this is right on the border. In fact, it just went over 40 right now at 42. So I don't know if it's the simple fact that this watch hasn't been meant. It's been quite a time since this watch was manufactured and maybe just sitting in a box for a while is uh, making it run fast. I don't know. Maybe it's magnetized. Maybe I should try demagnetizing it. But once again, this is an NH35. You never know what you're going to get. Usually they're fairly accurate. This time I got a bad one. But it probably can be regulated. If I took it to a watch guy, he could probably slow it down a bit. The titanium bracelet has hollow end links. 
and then the links themselves are solid titanium but it has these polished steel caps on the center links and i really wish invicta did not do this i mean i have a tight if you give somebody a titanium bracelet why would you put these steel caps on it to make it shiny especially when the titanium looks so good so i think that was a big mistake on invicta's part but you know invicta they like to be flashy and maybe they just couldn't help themselves in this case uh the bracelet has push pin adjusters and i had it took me quite an effort to get these push pins out. I was using one of them little screw tools and I kept bending the ends. So I finally had to give up and use a hammer. And I uh, got them out eventually. Then the clasp is a press clasp, but it is titanium and not steel. Sometimes a titanium watch will have a steel clasp, but not this case. It does have four holes of micro adjust. And this being Invicta, it's not a push-button clasp, it's a friction clasp. But unlike most Invictas, it doesn't take a huge effort to unclasp it. So I've had Invictas before where you dig your thumbnail into it trying to open them. They were so tight, but not this one. Then it has this safety fold-over. Overall, I like the clasp. I think it works well. It's not the most visual appealing being a press clasp, but... I'd rather have a titanium press clasp than a steel milled clasp. Here's the watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. It's a big watch, but I can pull it off. So I don't know if your wrist was any smaller than seven, if you'd want to do this or not. But then again, it's your wrist, your choice. But I think it looks nice. I like it. I had to remove two links. And then move it in one micro adjust for it to fit. So it should fit pretty big wrist. And being a watch this big, you want it to fit big wrist anyway. I'm uh, not going to show it to you on any other straps because it's titanium. And so if you have a titanium watch, why would you put it on another strap? Here we are in the loom room. Invicta isn't known for their loom, so I'm not expecting much with this test. As we speed up the time, you can see that the loom is just so-so. It's fading fairly fast, and unfortunately, the minute hand is one of the first things to go. Yeah, this loom is subpar. What do I like about this watch? It's titanium. That's the number one thing I like about it. Titanium. And it's a nice-looking watch. It looks good. Yeah, it's kind of a sub-style, but not a, not a complete knockoff of a sub. And I really like the gray of the titanium. I think it's really sharp looking. And I like the fact that this titanium makes such a big watch wear light. I like the fact that it has inverted end links that helps this big watch fit a smaller wrist. What are my grapes and groans? Polished center links. I think that was a big mistake. It's a titanium watch. Show off the titanium. The bezel action is way too stiff, and the loom's fairly lackluster, just ho-hum loom. Do I recommend this watch? Well, I'm hoping that I just got a bad one, and the bezel's normally not this stiff, but I can't guarantee this. If it wasn't for the bezel, I'd be screaming to get this watch. But, once again, I did lubricate it, and it did help a little bit. And it's just such a great looking watch and it really wears nice and it's so light that I still recommend it. So unless you just love a buttery smooth bezel, I would say go ahead and get this thing while they're still available. Once again, Invicta does, does not make this anymore. So once they run out, they will run out. Well, thank you for watching my review of the Invicta 0420. And I will be back with another review. Be sure and like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.